All right, so I got this new thing on my channel, and hopefully it's gonna happen every week, but basically it will be called Let's Alter This. And I will take an object that I might have thrown away in the garbage, and I'll play with it and see what I come up with. All right, the reason why I have so many cartridge boxes out here is because I cleaned up my studio, and I didn't have room for these bulky boxes. So I took the cartridges and the booklets out of these boxes, but I didn't want to throw them away. They're perfect for gift giving. And you can you can put a lot of chocolates in there, candies. I think you can probably fit um, a pair of gloves in there. What's great about these boxes though, besides the size, is the closure. It's magnetic. So you don't have to figure out a way to keep your box closed when you're giving your gift. It's already done for you. So let's head out to my studio and let's alter this. So here's my box which I've already started altering and I went around the edges with this paint. It's called Precious Metal Color. It's made by Viva Decor. This one in particular is orange yellow but look at this. It really has a nice shine to it. You have to remember to shake it really well um, but the results are amazing. What is also good about this kind of paint is that it'll go onto any type of surface, whether it's porous or non-porous. So you can do it on paper, on um, chipboard, but you can also use it on plastic, metal, glass, anything goes. The reason why I chose this color is because I was inspired by this piece of paper it is the Lost and Found by My Mind's Eye. I haven't decided yet if I'm going to be using gray or black cardstock to matte my paper. So I'm also going to be using these flowers, which I had previously altered, but I didn't like the way they turned out. They, to me, the colors were too washed out. And I have these leaves here that also coordinates with that gold litter and those tiny little black roses. I wanted to show you how I'm going to embellish my flowers. I'm gonna turn them into frost, what I call frosted flowers anyways. So what I did is I took some white glue, uh, any cheap white glue will work, and I coated the, the bottom of my container here with that glue, and I'm gonna add water to this. And I don't have the exact recipe. I just add water until I'm satisfied with the result. It's got to be liquid enough for the flour to be dunked in. So you want a good coverage on your flour. Okay. You want to ret retain enough of the glue so that everything will stick to your flour and stay that way. So unfortunately, I don't have the stem of the flour, so I'm using my uh, handy dandy uh, tweezers here and I'm just going to dunk my flour moving it around in my container and by the way it's not a paper flower it's actually made of oh I want to say what's it called fun foam and uh, so those are really hard to dye when you want to dye them and that's why that color was like very wishy-washy remove the excess liquid for a little bit and then here next to me I have uh, some dazzling diamond glitter and the reason why I have it in the small container is that I keep my uh, Glitter in this big container, but if I were to dunk my flour in there the glue would get in there and I might as well scrap the whole rest the rest of the um, of the container So that's why I set aside some of the glitter and that way I can just throw it away throw it out when I'm done glittering my flour See some of the glue fell into my little container. So there I have my flower all glittery. It's very pretty. I'm going to add some of this um, craft re-inker in basic black from Stampin' Up! You can use regular re-inker like the classic one. It doesn't matter. I just happen to get my hands on the um, on the craft one. And I'm gonna add the dye right in there wish it around and actually I am so happy with this color because if you remember from my paper it's not exactly dark it's it's a little bit washed out so this is not like a true true black it's kind of like um oh I like this it has um, gray tones to it which I'm quite impressed all right Let's try this together. <laughs> this is an experiment, guys. All right, where's my other flower? Right here. 
Okay, let's do this. So let's dunk it in there. <gasps> oh, this is going to be nice. I'm going to try and do a bit of the underside as well because we never know what's going to show at the end of the experiment or how it's going to sit on the box. So I'm just trying to get as much coverage as I can. Ooh, have you ever seen a gray rose? <laughs> Well, you've seen it here first, folks. Okay, I'm moving all around here. All right, let's put some more. I'll try to make the other flower a little bit darker. There it is. Oh, I like this. Oh, it's pretty. Oh, I don't know what you guys think, but I'm quite satisfied with this one. Oh, you're so pretty. Mm-mm-mm. All right, so, and be very careful. You need a surface that is non-stick because once this flower dries, uh, it will get stuck to whatever <laughs> you have it sitting on. And this is a non-stick craft mat, so this is perfect. I'm gonna add a bit of black. Um, I'm gonna let this dry. I'm going to start on my box. This is the closure, so I thought it would be nice to have a pull on here, but I didn't have really anything. I didn't have one of those drawer pulls from by Tim Holtz, so I went into my button stash and I took out this one, which I thought would go really well with the paper. But I, I wanted this to be a little bit, I wanted to have a little space between the box and this button. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue, hot glue this eyelet, a large eyelet to the back of the button. And then I'm going to glue this over here. So I'll try and see if it works. So here's my finished box. I'm really happy with how it turned out. I love those glitter flowers. For this one here, I ended up having to add some orange glitter over the gold glitter that I originally put because it was just a little bit too yellow and it didn't match that the glitter on the paper. So what I did is I took some spray adhesive and I sprayed really lightly and then added the orange glitter and it worked perfectly. And because the paper is so decorative, I didn't have to add too many embellishments. And I love how the label shows up on that piece of paper. It's just, uh, the paper is just so fun to work with. So what I did is I added some uh, fuzzy leaves. They're kind of like velvety and I really like those. I don't know if you'll be able to catch the, uh, the 
tiny black roses right there. They're so cute. And then I love those black pearls there, really shiny. And I added in another rose here. And as for the pull, um, I'm going to have to figure out another mechanism because when I pulled on it, I feel like the paper wants to come with it. The other problem with this closure is that because you have magnets here, you can't really add anything that, um, you can't add anything here because otherwise the magnets won't catch. So, and to be quite honest, if you want something really solid for that pull, you would have to go all the way through here and then that will interfere with the magnet. So I'm going to have to figure out another way to add a good solid pull because I really like the idea. These boxes, that, I mean, it's great. You can put whatever you want in it. Um, I'm thinking chocolates or a small gift, but I also found out that you can fit one of those big punches by stamping up their new format. It fits perfectly. You just add a bit of tissue paper around it and you've got a nice box to give to a friend, which is what I did in um, on Monday. Last Monday I gave a punch to my friend Pauline and I had decorated the box like this. And if you want to see my other box, it, it's on um, my Monday, October 19th post. So, uh, and I'll have pictures of this um, this one up on my blog as well. So that's it guys. If you have any questions, feel free to, to leave a comment and I will see, see you later. Bye.